This is Keegan Murray. In 2020, his senior year of high school, he was a mediocre three-star prospect who wasn't even recruited by any major schools. ESPN and other scouting outlets did not even rank him at all. Nobody outside of his home state of Iowa knew who he was. But in a few short years, he went from being a complete unknown to the biggest stage in basketball. In the 2022 NBA Draft, he was selected as the fourth pick and cemented himself as one of the most coveted prospects of the class. But how did his value increase so much in such a short period of time? How did this unknown kid make this much progress so quickly? How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and without further ado, this is the story of Keegan Murray. Born in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Murray spent most of his life there and was quite popular amongst his own community. Him and his family would routinely attend charity events, and because he was a local star, most of his town knew him. In his four years in high school there, he was even named All-Metro Player of the Year, but there was a problem. Despite his success on a local level, he never got the exposure that you need to join the conversation among the elite prospects in the nation. The public high school he attended, Prairie High School, had a fairly decent athletic program, but it didn't compare to the elite private schools that most top-tier prospects come from these days. For example, if you look at the top 5 picks of the 2022 draft, three of them attended private schools renowned for their athletics. One of them, Jabari Smith, attended a public school as well, but it had one of the best basketball programs in the nation, a school that scouts frequently visit and observe for potential recruits. Murray, on the other hand, was not granted the same resources as the others. His family knew this too, hardly any schools were interested in him after his four years of high school. This is how he described it. Quote, when I was in high school, I wasn't highly recruited. I had one offer, from Western Illinois. For me, it was having that chip on my shoulder and knowing that the person across from me was not better than me. That was the mindset he had but his hopes of making the NBA seemed like a lost cause, so his family decided to take a shot in the dark. They chose to enroll him into an extra fifth year, a postgraduate season at a different high school. It was at DME Academy in Daytona Beach, Florida. Now DME is a private athletics training academy specifically designed to give athletes a chance at making the pros, when they otherwise would not have had the opportunity. This was a risky decision because, I mean, he was basically playing five years of high school ball, and he was already one of the oldest players of his grade due to having an early birthday. He would already be 20 years old before his freshman season in college. Anyway, his time at DME was a success. Among a roster of talented players, Murray led his team in scoring with 22 points and 7.5 rebounds a game though he was still viewed as a three-star athlete, so he remained unranked. However, there was a bright side, and it turns out it was the break that Murray desperately needed. So DME also played at a showcase called the Hoop Exchange Fall Festival, which got him and other DME athletes on the radar from college scouts. After that extra season, Murray got a call from the University of Iowa. This is what transpired, according to him. Quote, that showcase helped us a lot. Our coach at DME told us he was on the phone with coaches for three straight hours after it was over. That opened up a lot of things. Iowa called and set up a visit for us. After they offered, I was kind of shocked at first, honestly. I had to have time to process that. Iowa's head coach Frank McCaffrey knew that the Murray family had a legacy there. Keegan's father, Kenyon Murray, also went there back in the 90s. His twin brother, Chris, also got a scholarship offer at the same time that Keegan did. Some might call it nepotism, but in the world of pro sports, you gotta take every advantage you could get. For him, it was his chance to prove to the world he can play, and attract the attention of NBA scouts. For McCaffrey and Iowa, they got criticized for taking Murray in the first place. Cause everyone thought he offered Murray a spot on the team in the first place, cause his father went there but they too had faith in him to prove the doubters wrong. Above all else, Murray gave credit to his family for encouraging him to keep pushing forward. His family's incredibly tight, and his parents gave him all the support he needed to take his game to the next level, even when things were looking bleak when he had zero scholarship offers not too long ago. However, Murray's time in Iowa started off a bit shaky. 
As a freshman, he was the team's backup forward, playing just 18 minutes a game. Iowa had a veteran-dominated team led by National Player of the Year Luca Garza, who played the same position as Murray. So Murray was basically just relegated to being a rotational bench player. During that time though, he kept his head down and continued to work. In the summer, between his freshman and sophomore seasons, he worked harder than he's ever had, with a key focus on his three-point shots. Murray was never a prominent three-point shooter, but this improvement opened up his game greatly. He also credited his success due to his intense rivalry with his twin brother, who also happened to be on the team too. He stated, Having him here has helped a lot. In the offseason, we'd come here, just the two of us, and work on being competitive. We played a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Just having him throughout my basketball journey has been incredible for me. We've just kept pushing each other our whole lives, and it doesn't stop here. Murray also packed on 20 pounds and grew another inch over the summer, now being 6'9", 225 pounds. With Luca Garza graduating, the Hawkeyes needed a new player to take the reins. They needed a new star, and that's when Murray stepped in. When Coach McCaffrey observed him during practices, he knew it was time. He's ready, he's a confident kid, he stays within himself, nothing seems to really rattle him at all. We worked hard in the offseason, he never tries to do the things he can't do on the floor. And so, in his sophomore season, everything came together. He gained the trust of his coach, and now he became the leader of the team. The leading scorer, the first option, Murray made the All Big Ten first team, and was awarded the Big Ten tournament's most valuable player. He looked like a completely different player from his freshman year. Not only did his confidence skyrocket, but he showed off everything he worked on over the summer. Murray's three-point shot, which I mentioned earlier, was very shaky and inconsistent, but in a single summer, he went from barely taking any threes to averaging nearly five attempts per game on 40% shooting. In the span of a single college season, Keegan Murray went from an unknown prospect to one of the most highly touted players in the country. And it did not stop there. The next stop was the NBA draft. Murray made history, becoming the highest draft pick in the history of the University of Iowa. He was pretty much a consensus top 10 pick in every single mock draft in the months leading up to it. When the Kings were on the board, they were firm in their belief that you should always take the best player available, regardless of fit or positional need. And for them, there wasn't any doubt that the best player available at their spot was Keegan Murray. He became the fourth pick of the draft, joining a roster that's in the beginning stages of a rebuild. But it's a roster stacked with young talent. All of them hopeful for a crack at the rotation. But with Murray's expansive skill set and versatile scoring ability, I think he'll have a good future ahead of him. Though there's still some questions regarding how his game will translate to the pros. One of the biggest uncertainties from the scouting reports I've read is, what position will he play? He's kind of a tweener, a combo forward. We knew that in college, but we've seen many combo forwards struggle to transition to the NBA. Because he doesn't have a true position, he might not fit into any particular role, at least early in his career. If I were to predict his NBA career, I think he's one of those guys who will have a slow start. And his success will depend a lot on how his team fits him into the rotation. Where will the Kings put him? What role will they give him? The Kings haven't had the most luck with their high draft picks in the last decade, but I feel like they're going in the right direction. Anyway, that's all folks. The story of Keegan Murray is an exceptional journey of a young man fighting against all odds to reach his dream. Very rarely do we ever see a player go from a 3-star athlete to the top of the draft board within a year. It's a feel-good story, and I don't want to be a downer, but to be honest, it's also so rare to see these type of late bloomers succeed. I want to see him do well, but the devil's advocate in me thinks that there's a reason that this guy wasn't on anyone's radar for a long time. The chip will always be on his shoulder, but perhaps Murray can break this trend. Anyway, that's all folks. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section what you think about Keegan Murray. Where do you see his NBA career headed towards? Do you see him becoming a star fairly quickly, or will it take a while for him to develop? He is quite the older rookie too starting his rookie year at the age of 22. Anyway, what do you think? Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.